Hi everyone, very vague here, and this three-part tutorial series, I'm going to be taking you through from start to finish how I created this skateboard animation using Marvelous Designer and Blender. And so the way in which I'm going to structure this course is, firstly, in this part, I'll take you through all the basics of Marvelous Designer and demonstrate what I think are the most important features in the program. So the goal here won't be to make something pretty, rather it'll just be to get you to have a play around so you're feeling confident and familiar with the UI and tools. So it'll very much be geared towards people using the program for the first time, but even if you have used Marvelous Designer before, I'd still recommend to follow along, as I'm sure you'll pick up some new tips and tricks along the way. Then for the second part, we'll put our newly learned skills into practice and create the skater outfit itself by making some top and bottom garments from reference images and mood boards. I'll also go over how we can add in additional accessories to our outfit like bum bags, hats, and so on. And then finally for the third part, we'll run our cloth animation sim and then export this into Blender so we can add some more realistic materials and lighting to it before rendering. And just quickly before we get started, all the assets and resources we'll be using throughout this course will be available to download on my Gumroad or ArtStation here, which I'll link in the description below. So this will also contain all the finished project files, as well as template files I use across all my projects, so I'd highly recommend downloading it. And it's also obviously a great way of supporting me to keep making these videos for free on YouTube which I'm a pretty heavy advocate for, as I really believe everyone should have equal access to education no matter your background, so YouTube is great for this. So we'll get started and go ahead and open up Marvelous Designer from my desktop. And just for reference, I'm using Marvelous Designer version 9, but everything we go over should be available in the other versions as well as Clo 3 d which is fundamentally the same program. So the first thing we're going to want to do is import our avatar, which will act as the virtual mannequin for our clothes to sit on. So we'll go up to our main toolbar, go into file, then import, then alembic, because this is what our particular file type is in this case, and then select our preferred model. I've included two files in the folder, which are a basic walk cycle and a skateboarding animation, like in the render I showed earlier. I'm just going to go ahead and use the same skateboarding avatar, so we'll choose this one. And then just ensure these settings are the same as mine here, with the unit set to meters and the frame rate set at 30 before pressing OK. And now you see we've got our avatar in a simple T pose ready for us to model our clothes on. So if you've never used Marvelous Designer before, you might be wondering how I'm moving around here. So for the view controls, I'm using Shift right click to pan around and right click to orbit, but I think by default this might be middle mouse button. So if you want to change these, you can do so by dropping down the settings option on the main toolbar, and then select the user settings option. Then if we go into the view controls tab, you can see we can change these to whatever we please. So feel free to use mine here, or just change these to whatever works best for yourself. So just to go over the basic UI of Marvelous Designer, as you can see, we have our two main viewports here, the 3D viewport on the left and the 2D pattern window on the right. So we'll do most of our 2D pattern creation and layouts here on the right, and then all our simulation and 3D positioning here on the left. We then have our two main toolbars above each, mostly corresponding to the tools you can do in each viewport, but there is a bit of crossover. Then lastly on the right, we have our fabric and properties tabs or windows, which I'll go into in more detail in a second. We can move on to going over some of the basics of Marvelous Designer and how we can start to create our first garment. First, let's start by looking at one of the most important tools, which is the shape tool. So to use this tool, we'll go to the toolbar above the 2D pattern window and select the one labeled polygon. And then, if we hold this button down, we'll get a drop down that allows us to choose from a range of shapes like rectangle or ellipse. But for my example, I'm just going to go ahead and use polygon. So for the polygon mode, we just simply left click around to make different control points for our shape. And I'm just going to make this roughly cover the head of our avatar. And we can add bezier curves instead of just standard straight lines by holding in left click and then dragging till we're happy with the shape of the curve and release. 
And then we can close out our shape by coming back to our first point and clicking. And now we'll get a solid pattern ready for simulation. We can then use the transform pattern tool to move this around in the 2D pattern window and scale or rotate it. So to position this in the 3D viewport, we'll want to use our gizmo or gimbal. So this should come up automatically when you click on the pattern in the 3D viewport. And I'm not really sure why the folks at Marvelous Designer would do this, but I think by default, the control access for this is set to by view, which basically means it will kind of orient these arrows depending on your viewpoint, which I found to be quite tricky to use. So to change this, we can go into preferences on the main toolbar and select gizmo and then change this to local coordinate. And now we can see these arrows will stay in the same direction, whichever way we look at it. With that set up, we can now rotate this pattern and position it above our avatar's head, ready for simulation. So for the simulation itself, it's quite simple. We just go up to the simulate icon here in the top left above the 3D viewport. And if we hold it down, you see we get a range of options. So depending on your computer specs here, GPU will most likely result in the quickest simulations. But CPU, even though it will take a bit longer, will give us much more physically accurate results. So this is the option I tend to use most often. And the last two are essentially just CPU, but with more resources allocated. So I tend to only use complete for the final animation, which we'll go over a bit later in the tutorial. And now I'm just gonna hit the button to run the simulation. And we'll see our garment is now on our avatar's head. So straight off the bat, I can see the garment is much smaller than anticipated. So I'm gonna stop the simulation, then hit Control Z to undo. And now I'm just gonna scale this up using the transform pattern tool as we went over before and then re-simulate. So now simply by using left click and drag, we can pull and tug the garment into place until we're happy with it. And this really is what I find to be the most powerful part of Marvelous Designer, is the ability to play around like this with our garment in real time. And obviously the more complicated our garment gets, the slower this simulation will become, but I find for the most part it's always pretty manageable to work with. Moving on, one of the most important things to stay on top of in Marvelous Designer is to ensure our simulation resolution is correct per garment. So as you can see here, it's already looking a bit low res with our ear sticking through. So to get a better view of what our current resolution is, we can go into our toolbar here in the 3D viewport and change the fabric viewing mode to mesh. And now we can see the wireframe of the resolution of our mesh. So to increase this, let's first select our garment and then under the simulation properties in the right hand windows property editor, let's change the particle distance from 20 to 10. So by default, this is always going to be set to 20, but we'll want to change this value per garment depending on how millimeter perfect we want it to be. I'd say on average, I mostly don't put this value lower than 10, but if you're working on something very intricate, you might want to go into the single digits, but keep in mind, this will increase simulation time the lower you go. So now if we change back to textured surface viewing mode and then re-simulate, we'll see we're getting a much cleaner result. Next, we'll look at editing the actual fabric itself that is assigned to our garment. So to do this, we we'll want to go into the object browser in the right hand window and then select on the fabric we want to edit. In this case, fabric one. Once selected, we'll get an orange outline come up around our garment to show that we're in fabric edit mode, which will change all our settings in the property editor to the material settings. And now we can go in and change things like the color, texture, and thickness of our fabric. So I changed mine to a violet color so we can see it a bit clearer. And then I'm gonna give it a thickness of about three millimeters. And if you notice that this doesn't change the appearance of the thickness in the 3D viewport like mine's not, it's probably because we're not in the correct fabric viewing mode. So to change this, we'll go into the same viewing mode toolbar we did before and change this to thick textured surface. And now we'll see we're getting that showing up correctly. Next, we can change the physical preset assigned to our fabric. So this is sort of like an additional layer on top of our simulation settings we went over before. But this time, rather than controlling the resolution, it's going to control the actual material type by which it's going to try to approximate in the simulation. 
So to give you an example here, if we were to go in and set this to something like silk and simulate, we'll see suddenly our garment has become much more loose and flexible. Whereas if we were to do the same thing, but this time selecting leather cowhide, we'll see our result is much more rigid and heavy. So continuing on, I'm just going to select my preset to be cotton canvas, which is one of the most commonly used presets and will serve us for the purpose of this demonstration. Next, we're going to go over how we can start to add in some detail to our garment. So the first thing we might want to look at doing is cutting a hole in this piece. And there's a few ways to do this. So if you're from a more typical 3D background, you might find it more intuitive to do it in the 3D viewport itself. So for this method, we'll select our line 3D pattern tool and then proceed to just draw roughly around the head shape of our avatar. And then close the line out. And we'll now see we have our corresponding shape in the 2D pattern window here. But we can't actually edit this yet, so to turn this into a proper internal shape, we have to go back to our 3D viewport, this time selecting the edit line 3D pattern tool and then with all our edges selected, using Control A, we can then open up the quick menu by clicking middle mouse button in my case and choose Convert to Internal Shape. And now that that's a proper internal shape, we can cut this out by again selecting the shape in the 2D pattern window, open up our quick menu and select Convert to Whole. Then if we now simulate this, we'll see that our garment deforms accordingly but it's not really giving me the result I wanted, which can sometimes be the case when we use this 3D line method of cutting. So we could just go in and edit the points in the eternal shape so it fits better, but rather than do that, I'll show you the other more efficient method for doing this style of cutting. So I'm just going to delete this hole and then come up here to my internal polygon line tool drop down and select internal ellipse. We'll then create our ellipse by left clicking inside our garment and dragging it to a happy with the size. We can then reposition this using our transform pattern tool. And then I'm just going to delete this previous shape that we don't need anymore. We can then repeat the same process we used before by selecting on our ellipse and converting it to a hole through our quick menu and now simulating. We can then just pull and tug this to a happy with how it's sitting on our avatar. And just for the purpose of demonstration, let's say we weren't happy with our simulation and we wanted to somehow reset our garment. We can do this by again selecting our garment, opening up the quick menu and this time selecting reset 3D arrangement. And now with that reset, we could move it into place using the gizmo, making sure we're in select move mode and then re-simulate. So now that we're happy with how that's sitting on our avatar, we could go in and make adjustments to our initial shape if we wanted to by going up here above the 2D pattern window and choosing the edit pattern tool. We can then simply click and drag our points to reposition them or get rid of unnecessary ones by pressing delete. Another great tool I like to use is the Smooth Curve tool, which allows us to drag on our points and turn straight edges into beveled ones. And then if we needed to potentially add more points to a particular edge of our garment, we can go up here and choose the Add Points Split Line tool. So all these changes will be approximated in our 3D viewport while we're editing, but to get the proper accurate result, we'll want to go ahead and simulate again. Next, we're going to look at sewing, which is how we can attach multiple garments together, as well as creating new shapes from our existing garment. So the easiest method to do this is to start by creating our new shape as an internal line. I'm just going to choose internal rectangle and then drag this roughly to the size I want before then scaling and positioning it using the transform pattern tool. Then once in place, we can open up the quick menu and select the option clone as pattern. What this will do is create a copy of our shape, but separate it from our existing pattern and create a new one. What we'll then want to do is position this roughly in front of our original rectangle so we can clearly see what we're doing when we set up the sewing. 
So for the sewing tools, all of these are located above our 2D pattern window in this section here. The first one we're going to look at, and probably the most commonly used one, is the segment sewing tool. Basically what this one's going to do is just sew by the edge or segment. So as you can see as I hover over all the segments in my garment here, I'm getting this blue line ready for sewing. So we can go ahead and give this a try on our rectangle here, by first left clicking on an edge of the separate one, before then clicking on the same corresponding edge on our internal line. And now what we should see are these clean parallel lines symbolizing that when simulated these two edges will be joined together. Now if you don't see these parallel lines and you're getting more of a jagged crisscross look like so, it's because these two sections on the sewing edge haven't been lined up correctly. So to fix this, what we'll want to ensure is that when selecting each edge, we select the same either upper or lower part of the edge. So now I'll do it again, making sure to select the top directional notch of each edge, and now we'll get the correct result. We'll then just repeat this process for the next two edges and then simulate. And now we should have a nice rectangular pocket on the front of our garment. So now using the edit sewing tool, I'm just going to select the seams we just created and press delete so I can show you the other most common sewing tool which is the free sewing tool. So this method works in a similar way, except rather than sew each segment one by one, we can just go in and trace around the whole edge we want to sew and then do the same for the corresponding internal one. So yeah, it's really up to you which one you prefer here, but generally they do the same thing. And then we also have a few other ones here. If we hold on each of the drop downs, you'll see we get the MN segment sewing tool and the MN free sewing tool. And these pretty much work exactly the same way, except they allow us to select multiple edges at once and group them before sewing them to the other side. So I strongly recommend pausing here and playing around with all of these sewing tools until you feel relatively confident, because I think it helps the learning curve of the program a lot as once you sort of understand the basics of sewing, it will make everything a bit less daunting. And in my experience, 90% of the time a garment or outfit isn't simulating the way we want, it's usually because of bad or incorrect sewing. Moving on, we can start to look at other tools that allow us to add further detail to our garment. We'll start with the cut and sew tool, which will allow us to do something similar to what we just created with our sewing tools. So we'll create an internal rectangle, this time on the pocket itself, and then if we select on this and open up our quick menu, we can now select the cut and sew option. And as you can now see, what's happened is it's separated our shape and automatically sewn it to the pocket that we cut it off of. So this comes in handy in a range of situations. And what we could then also do is assign this detail a new fabric by going over to our fabrics window and press add. Now with our detail element selected, we can then hit this assign button on the new fabric and voila, this will now be assigned to it. Next, we'll look at creating zips. So let's say instead of this detail patch, we wanted to change this to a zipper instead. So we'll go ahead and delete this and then come up and select our zipper tool here above the 3D viewport. Now what we'll do is first left click where we want our zipper to start and then double click where we want it to finish. We'll then repeat this process for the second edge, making sure to click the points in the same order. And then now we should have a nice looking zipper when we simulate. We can even adjust the positioning of the zipper by selecting our select move tool and then dragging it open or close. Similarly, we can also change the zipper type itself by selecting on it and then going into our property editor and adjusting these settings to your liking. So now that we've covered the basics of zips, we can also look at creating buttons. For the first step, we'll need to create a buttonhole for our button to attach to. So to do this, let's go up here and select the buttonhole tool before going into our 2D pattern window and left clicking on the area where you want your button to sit. Next, we'll do the same thing, but this time selecting the button tool itself and then simply click on the center of the buttonhole we just created. And now, as you can see when we simulate, we have our button attached to our garment via the buttonhole. And then just like our zipper, we can change the shape and look of our button 
by coming over to the property editor and playing around with the settings here. Another handy tool that I often use is the offset as internal line tool. This tool allows us to add detail lines based on existing edges of our garment by offsetting them. So this can come in really handy when you're adding seams or trims to things, or maybe you just want to change the material of a particular edge and so on. To use this tool, we'll first select the edge we're looking to offset before opening up our quick menu and selecting offset as internal line. We can then enter our desired settings into this dialog box here. So this is useful if you wanted to add multiple offset lines or you need to change the direction of the offset, etc. But for me, I'm just going to keep these settings as is, but change the distance from 5 to 10 mm and then press OK. Now, with our new offset line selected, we can then open up the quick menu and combine this with the cut and sew tool we went over earlier to create a collar. So I'm now just going to move this over here in the 2D pattern window and give it a new material by hitting the assign button in the fabrics tab. Then we can play around with the color of this by adjusting our settings in the property editor as we went over earlier. Next, to give our garment that real extra bit of detail, I'm going to add in some stitching. So we'll find all our stitching tools located over here on our toolbar above the 2D pattern window. And really the main one I tend to use is the segment top stitch tool here, which is quite simple to add. We just select it and then in the 2D pattern window, drag over all the edges you wish to add stitching to. And now, as we can see, if we zoom in, we have all these rows of stitching that have been added. So to make these bigger or to change the stitching type, we can again go over here to our object browser and then in our top stitch tab with the default top stitch selected, adjust our settings. So for mine, I'm going to change the shape to zigzag and then adjust the color here to black so it's a bit easier to see. And now, as you can see, we've got some nice stitching covering all our internal and external edges. Now you might notice when we simulate this now that the stitching will turn off, but don't worry, that's just temporary from Marvelous Designer and we'll turn back on again once we stop the simulation. And just another useful tool whilst we're on the topic of simulating is the pin tool, which we can add by using the shortcut W. So just to demonstrate this, I'm going to move our garment up a bit here and then simply tap W on the spot we want to be pinned during the simulation and then simulate. And now we'll see that's being held there nicely. So this can come in very handy when working with complex garments and you might need to temporarily hold up a certain part of a fabric or something similar. And then we can just remove our pin by again clicking W on the same spot. So that about covers it for the basics. And as you can see, we've ended up with this beautiful contemporary poncho looking thing. But hopefully now having made it, you're feeling a bit more confident enough to take on putting some of these skills into practice and making something of your own. But yeah, I just wanted to reiterate that I think the key to understanding and progressing in Marvelous Designer is really just refining the basics, as I don't think it's like some other 3D softwares where it's this kind of exponential learning curve that every time you learn one thing, you learn those five other things that you now also need to learn. Rather, it's just taking it step by step, and as we've covered in this intro, just going over each tool one at a time until you start to get your bearings with the program. So in the next part, we'll be putting our new skills into practice and making something a bit more typical in the form of jeans and a hoodie for this skater outfit. But before then, I'd really encourage you to repeat some of the steps we've just been over and maybe take 10 or 15 minutes or however long you want just to add in a few more things to this poncho until you're feeling ready. And then I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.